However, the main issue is that I have no clarity on anything at all. I don't know if this is my purpose or not. No, it's not your purpose. I'll tell you that right now. Not everything has to be your purpose, guys. Not everything you do has to be your purpose. Sometimes you just do stuff for the sake of doing it. Like I was even saying about with the art. Art's only purpose is to express itself. Not everything has to have a grand, grandiose end, a grandiose point. Sometimes you just do stuff because it comes naturally. He says, I don't know if this is my purpose or not because my brain tries to consciously create my purpose. Yeah. It likes to be 100% certain on what is and what, will, what form it'll take. Currently, I would describe what I'm doing, what I'm going through as a rough spot or what I heard in one of the earlier calls, the dark night of the soul. I don't know what to do. My emotions are all over the place. There's so many things I could do, so much internal and external pressure to do something. My parents are putting pressure on me to go to university because I did well in school. I don't see any way out of my current situation and don't even know what I truly want anymore. Feels like I've hit rock bottom. I'm stuck. Stan. So Stan, you sound like a, you sound like an artistic guy. You got to be a little crazy to be artistic. <laughs> you got to be a little emotionally unstable. And that's how you sound right now. And you know what the best way to deal with emotional instability? Don't trust your emotions. And you know how you also another way to handle that? The battlefield for your soul is in the mind. Don't trust your thoughts. And, and you don't need to figure anything out. I know that sounds crazy. I understand why that sounds crazy. But I think we've been fed a lie about life and ambition and the need to know what we're doing and to always have a clear de delineated path and to always be 100% certain on what we're doing and why we're doing it. I'm starting to believe that that's not the case. That's not true. And that's not necessary at all. What's important is that you're present with what you got right now, what you're doing right now, and you do it for the sake of doing it in this moment and you don't think about the future because there is no future and you don't know how things are going to unfold. And a lot of times when you're in this situation where you don't know what to do, but you have people who are above you, you have an authority it is good to obey. I know this sounds crazy, but sometimes it is in our best interest. Sometimes we're being told exactly what to do. Sometimes we're being led to our purpose by simply obeying what our authorities tell us to do. I know it sounds nuts, but your parents love you. Your parents care about you. Your parents have invested in you. Your parents only want the best for you. They may not know where you're going to end up. They don't know what you're going to do. They don't know what the future looks like because none of us do. But they're offering you a path. You don't have to like the path. You don't, and you said that you did well in university. So they see that as something that, well, why not? Why not just do it? Right? especially when you're lost. Sometimes we're lost because we're not, we're not moving. So a couple of weeks ago, I gave this story that was shared with me when I did this wilderness survival camp with my son, Benjamin. And he was talking about how this guy was, uh, he was um, lost in the woods. He was walking around, he was lost in the woods. And when he realized that he was lost, he started panicking. And he started running, he, he started panicking and he ended up not getting found. But what happened was his family sent out a, a person to find him, right? He was, he was like a tracker to go out and find him. And the tracker started following his, his footsteps, started following this guy's steps and was like, saw where he was walking when he was in the woods. And then the tracker stopped and he was like, this place right here is where he lost it. He started panicking because what the tracker started discovering was that his feet, 
He was making tracks that were that would look like they were faster, right? They were more spread apart, and they started. They looked scattered. He was like he didn't he didn't know what he was doing, where he was going, until finally he sat down. It started raining, and he froze to death and died. And they found him sitting next to a tree somewhere. How does how does that relate? How does that relate to you and your situation? Well, when you're when you're walking and you find yourself not sure what to do, the last thing you should do is try to figure it out by panicking. Well, where am I? What am I doing? I'm not, I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. So you know what you do? You start overreacting. You start taking action that you don't need to be taking and you end up running in circles, burning out your energy. And then you finally become so tired that you just collapse under a tree and you die. What is an alternative? This is what the teacher was trying to explain to us. He said, what that man could have done when he discovered that he was lost is he should have stopped. He said the best thing for him to have done was to stop and start looking around and familiarizing himself with where he is now. He said he should not start thinking about where he needs to go Think about where you are right now and start making a plan for how you can make the best of the current situation you're in. And so that's where he starts thinking about, oh, looks like the sun is gonna be down in about four hours. There are clouds over there. That rain is gonna come in. I really don't know where I am, but I'm gonna need to protect myself from that rain, especially since I only have four hours before the sun goes down and it's gonna get cold. What do I have around here that I can use to uh, create some shelter? How can I stay warm? How can I stay protected? The whole point is that rather than panicking because you don't know where you're going, stop and look around at what is and take action on what's available to you, right? You don't need to know where you're going. You just have to be present with where you're at because the answer is right there in front of you. The answer is always right there in front of us. It might not be what we want it to be, right? Like the answer for that guy would be, well, I want to be in my house with my family. Ah, that's not where you're at right now. So fuck that. Where are you right now? What can you do? You, you can panic and you can run in circles, freak out and die. Be anxious, be depressed. Or you could literally look at your feet and recognize that you can only put one foot in front of the other and that there's a path. Let me take that step on that next path. I think just because, especially since you don't know what to do with yourself, your parents are giving you a path. Your parents are saying, look, just go to university. Just do it, just finish it, just do it. You said, it seems like you already were in there. And to them, it's like, when you don't know what to do and you're being offered something, what could you lose? Right? The dark night of the soul, right? You mentioned dark night of the soul. That's cool. That's good that you mentioned the dark night of the soul because you know what St. John of the Cross talks about in the dark night of the soul? Embracing aridity. Embracing boredom. Embracing not knowing, being okay with not feeling okay. That's what he talks about. That's the best strategy for dealing with the dark night of the soul. Is embrace it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to get out of it. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to run away. Embrace it. Love it. Be with it, right, Stan? That's what this whole program is about, right, bro? Everybody knows the king is about being. King is not doing, he's not thinking, he ain't feeling, he's allowing, he's being. He's sovereign, he's sensing, right? And that's what I think you need to do right now. Don't trust your thoughts. Don't trust your feelings. Don't trust your ability to do something about it. Allow yourself to be. And guess what? Guess what is inevitable? I can, I can guarantee you this. Guess what's, what's a guarantee if you allow yourself to be? 
that everything is going to unfold perfectly for me. Right? You got to say that to yourself. It's going to unfold perfectly. Everything's going to unfold the way it's supposed to unfold. You just get the hell out the way. If you ever get a chance to read the 33 Strategies of War by uh, Robert Greene, one of the strategies, I can't remember which one of them, it's one of the later ones, I think, is to not do anything. And he talks about like a Chinese general. I think it was like in a Chinese, you know, it, was, it comes from like the art of war. It was a Chinese general. And the Chinese general discovered that the best strategy in this moment, and he had used it numerous times, was to not do anything. And by not doing anything, he allowed his enemy to destroy itself, and he won the battle. The enemy freaked out because he wasn't doing anything. But if he would have taken action, if he would have made moves, if he would have attacked or whatever, he would have screwed it all up. Sometimes the best thing is not to do anything. And sometimes the best thing is not to know what to do and still allow yourself to be. Hope that helps, Stan. Hope some of that makes sense. <laughs> Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. And if you wanna join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age, it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.